What's the other part of it? We, guys, for those of you that don't want to make a million dollars, that's, I get it, no problem. I'm not asking you to do this. The business paid Sheena and I a little over $7.1 million already in six and a half years. What, what would you do if you know in three years you make a million dollars? What type of effort and work would you put in? I don't want to procrastinate. I don't get stuck in the period of procrastination. I need to keep the razor sharp. So, what's this power I'm talking about? You guys know about the marshmallow test? How many of you guys don't know about the marshmallow test? Okay, here's the test. For those that don't know the marshmallow test. A bunch of kids are put in a room and they're instructed by the professor. This is a Stanford study. Kids, you got two choices. When I leave this room, you can eat the mushroom, or the, uh, the, the marshmallow. You can eat the marshmallow. I'm, th I'm, th I'm thinking shrooms, man. <laughs> I've been ha hanging around the LA teams too long. <laughs> That's what happens when you hang around people from Culver City. All right, so, uh, gotta get back to, to D-Town, baby. So, when I leave the room, you can have this marshmallow. However, if you wait 15 minutes and I return, not only will I allow you to eat the marshmallow, but I'll give you another one. So I'll give you two. But for this year, kids, when I come back, if you ate the marshmallow, then that's it. You're one and done. But for those of you that can wait, I'll give you two when I come back and you haven't eaten your marshmallow yet. Guess what happened to a bunch of these kids? <laughs> it's like, oh, freaking out. Look, look at this kid. Oh, I don't know. What should I do? 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes to, what, a four-year-old? Is that long? It's like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, some of you guys right now won't even last 15 minutes today, and you're an adult. So these kids were studied, and they kept data on these kids. Guess what happened? They followed up years later. Next slide. And they followed up 40 years later from the Stanford. What, is it, what does it say there? Research found that the children who were willing to delay gratification and waited to receive the second marshmallow ended, having, have, ended up having higher SAT scores lower levels of substance abuse, lower levels of obesity, better response to stress, better social skills as reported by the parents, and generally better scores in a range of their life measures. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Next slide, sweetheart. Think about what that habit had done for these kids without even knowing it. Now, here's why many of you and I, we don't have this thing called delayed gratification. You know why? Here's why. How many of you were raised and you were broke? Right? You're, you're, you're broke, you're flat out broke. You wanted things, mom and dad said, money for what? <laughs> <laughs> to go down to the grocery store, oh mom, you want some Frosted Flakes, for what? <laughs> Put that back. <laughs> Mommy, can you get a toy? We don't need no damn toys. <laughs> I, got you, I got you toys three years ago. <laughs> So now, when you're raised with that language of broken knees, guess what happens to you now as an adult? You're wired to say, if I get it, let me get the most of it now. I got my money, let me spend it today. Think about what that habit just did. Think about what the programming of that is. The, the behavior, the wiring of that. When I, I was, I'm, I'm up, uh, about to post, I'm about something that uh, I've got in the PowerPoint later today, but I remember growing up in the 80s and the 90s. Chicago Bears, Walter Payton, Chicago Bears just dominating football. The 46D, Jim McMahon, Walter Payton. Simultaneously, guess what happened in 84? The Chicago Bulls drafted Michael Jordan. It was just crazy, it was pandemonium in Chicago. And I grew up during that area. I'm like, oh my God, right? You got the Chicago Bears, you got the Mad Street on Madison. It was nuts. Every kid wanted to have J's. Every kid wanted a starter jacket, a red one. And we're going to high school, you wore a starter jacket, and we went to class, somebody broke in your locker. Some kids would get jacked for their, for their shoes, right? But kids wanted these things. They had opportunity, they get it. They buy it, they consume it, they hoard it. Because you know why? Because in the back of their head, they don't ever know when it's going to ever come around again. 
It's the wiring of the broken knees. It's the behavior. Like, you don't even know you're wired that way until you start coming to events like this. Because now you're immersed into an environment of people speaking a different language. So, for example, Okafor. Um, if I said, bro, you got to learn how to speak Spanish. So, like, how many languages do you know already? English? I've, obviously, three. You know three languages. Was, uh, uh, okay, do you know Spanish? Okay, if I told you, Okafor, you got to go learn Spanish. Right? What's the best opportunity for you to learn Spanish? What's that thing, uh, what's that thing on so the software you listen to? Rosetta. Rosetta Stone? Either download Rosetta Stone or live in Mexico City for 30 days. Where do you think, where do you think is going to be more predisposed to learning Espanol? Living in Mexico City, right? Why? Because nobody else speaks anything else. What happens you run in, a, in an environment when everybody's thinking about making a million dollars, making a million dollars, making a million dollars, you're the goals, reaching the goals, reaching the goals, what's gonna eventually start happening to you? And then what happens, you go after this retreat, guess what, go, what, go, what happens when you go back home? You're going back to the environment where people still speak in broken knees. And then you have a choice subconsciously in your mind. Do I listen to what I just learned, the new language I've been looking to install in my life, or do I go back to where I came from? And subconsciously, you, 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 you do or you don't. How do you unlock this power of, obviously, what's the power? Delayed gratification. So, for example, how many guys have team members? MDs know this, VPs know this. Outside of company events, you're running for promotion. Next thing you know, your team goes off on a vacation. <laughs> and what, what do you think of yourself as the builder? What are you doing? We're in the middle of a run. And your team member says, well, you know, we just need to blow off some steam and go on a vacation. By the way, I'm preparing you because in about two weeks, guess what excuses you're about to hear from your prospects? Holidays. Holidays. It's coming up. But what area of your life would you add delayed gratification in? Your diet? By the way, I love sweets. <laughs> I love me some ice creams. I love me some, uh, some chips, chips and mahoys, milk. Matter of fact, yesterday I was at Baskin Robbins at, uh, at the Dallas Love Airport. I said, yeah, let me get a Rocky Road and a scoop of pistachio almond. Yeah, delicious, right? You guys are salivating right now. <laughs> what area could you add delayed gratification in your prayer life, your meditation life, your faith? So what area of your life would you, would you add to the park? delayed gratification. For example, well, Matt, I've, uh, for example, I, I, was, I was challenged because I started going to church and the church started recruiting me into different ministries. Matt, you need to be part of the youth ministry. You need to be part of the, uh, the uh, uh, homeless ministry. You need to be part of the, uh, the sports ministry. You need to be part of the financial ministry. Matt, you need to be part, I'm like saying, I'm, I'm, I'm in church every day. <laughs> and, like, I'm getting recruited every day I go on ministry. And then I realized, Dang, you know what? What's my first ministry? My first ministry is my own family. My own family is becoming a secondary ministry to me. Because I'm trying to get in good grace. Am I, is that what I'm trying to do? Trying to get good grace with the pastor? Trying to get good with the church? No, I'm, I'm trying to get in grace with the God. So why am I getting caught up with ministry? Multiple streams of income. How many guys have heard that? Well, millionaires have multiple streams of income. Yes, but in one industry. Make your millions first. Because here's what happens. Because most people that say it, they have multiple streams of income, they really don't. You got multiple trickles. <laughs> and trickles don't add up into streams, and streams don't definitely, but listen, would, would you rather have multiple streams of income or a freaking Mississippi River? Man. What gives birth to what? Rivers give birth to streams and tributaries. How, how, many, how many states does the Mississippi River in the middle of our country touch? It's like, 50, like of the 50 states. Touches like 30, 35 states, like if you were to Google it. A lot of states. It almost touches coast to coast. Next slide. So, what should you be doing? So here's some steps on how to invoke the power of delayed gratification. Why? Because it's a hidden power used every day by millionaires. Number one, clarity. You know, we did a very, very deep exercise with Patrick at the next board council retreat. 
in terms of clarity and another topic here in a second. But how clear are you about your dreams? I, asked, I, I was asking my new guys right now, back home, what do you want to do? What's, what are you clear about? Well, my, my job's just, you know, it's very physical and da da da. That's not, that's not specific enough. You got to be specific in your dreams, your goals, your reasons, and your next moves. If you're not, guess what you find? You find excuses. Yeah, you're right, George, I can't come to the office because, you know, I mean, my job's really got me time, you know, it's like so much pressure at my job, I can't come to the office. We're not asking to come to the office every day, we're asking to come to the office on a part-time basis, 15 to 20 hours a week of the 15 to 20 hours, four to five is spent physically with us. Is that a lot of time? It's not. The other area that you should be considering is your priorities. Your job is your job. My, my job, Matt, you don't understand. My job, Matt, but you don't understand. My job, Matt, is your job going to make you a millionaire? Is your job going to allow you to live your dreams, your goals, your reasons, your and live out your next moves? People don't even know their next moves. What's your next move? Um, Friday? <laughs> is that it? You don't, do you know why? Because the broken E's, they never taught us our next move. Just a, a couple days ago, I spent uh, some time with a guy named Garrett Gunderson. He wrote a book called Killing the Sacred Cow, New York Times bestselling author. And he also wrote the book called What Would the Rockefellers Do? You guys heard of the Rockefellers? So one of the names that built America. Standard Oil. We just spent a, a time in Breakers at one of his business partners' uh, um, uh, uh, hotels called the Breakers in Palm Beach. But when you look at Rockefeller, how did he fund and finance his family trust? With oil? He funded it with something that you sell. Life insurance. Yeah, life insurance. Guys, the Rockefellers have a permanent life strategy on every kid that gets born into the family, and when they withdraw money from the, mil uh, from the millionaire bank and they don't pay it back, guess what pays back, the, what pays back the loan from the family trust? The life insurance policy. If the kid doesn't pay the life insurance policy, guess who pays for the life insurance policy? The family trust. 153 Rockefellers are living off the Rockefeller Family Trust to this day. Why? Because they talk about priorities. They talk about clarity, what the Rockefeller family stands for. So, will your job get you to start thinking like that? Or entrepreneurial environments like this get you to start thinking like that? For example, who do you need to become, honestly? What do you need to get better at? Are you starting to write those notes down? Last one. Are you underestimating the price you need to pay to get to the next level? Well, if I don't make it to this BOM, I just make it to next week's. Do you realize that PHP works in dog years? <laughs> do, you, do you know like one week is like equivalent to like one month? That one month is equivalent to like a quarter? That one quarter is equivalent to like six months? Six months is equivalent to a year? And then when we see you take off on vacation and you didn't qualify for it, like why would you rob yourself of a condition that will make you great? You just, well, I want to enjoy it now because I just need some steam, but you didn't earn it. Well, I just had, you no, know, the, the company just gave me vacation time. I don't know when else I'm gonna, see, back to the broken knees mentality. I'm only gonna get it once. You know what abundance mentality says? I can create this anytime I want. You underestimate the price to pay. You underestimate the time necessary to get this business up off the ground. Now, will this business pay you millions and millions of dollars? Do you believe that? Yes. Then are you treating this like a hobby that you can pay nothing at, or do you treat your job with more respect than your business? That's a challenge. Well, Matt, you know, I can't get to the office because, you know, my boss, or your boss, do you know what your boss is? Do you know what your salary is? It's a temporary distraction to get you to forget about your dreams. That's what that salary is for. By the way, my staff is here. He's hearing me talk about this stuff and he's hearing me edit it. But guess what? My staff is an entrepreneur. Yeah, my staff is here as on salary, but if you do well with videos, guess what? He's part of the profit sharing. So in essence, he's my partner. And by the way, we had a tough conversation yesterday. Back and forth. I don't expect any relationship not to go on for any long, length of time without conflict eventually about to arise. But in that conflict, either your ego gets you better or gets you bitter. Which one do you have? Because guess what? Your MDs, your mentors, your VPs, the people in your, in your office, your sidelines, guess what? They're gonna, the price to pay to make this office great is you got to get better. 
Now the question for you is, are you going to be eventually a millionaire? Or are you going to be a now millionaire? Now. Right, right, blessing? You're going to be a now millionaire, right? She's going to live out that blessing. You're going to live out her name. I'm going to be a blessing to other people. What's your name? Blessing. <laughs> Don't you love her name? What a, what a powerful name. What, what, pray, what price are you willing to pay? Some of you guys don't pay enough. Some of you guys, some of you guys, for example, one guy told me, well, I'm from the hood, man. What does that mean? The hood means, man, you, you put in a little and get a lot. Well, first of all, that means you're buying life insurance. <laughs> but you're not. The second thing is you want to put in a little and get a lot. Think about this, guys. Think about this real quick. Think about this real quick. What's the average median household income in America based on last year's statistics through the pandemic? It's so probably 62,000 a year. It's probably 62,000 a year, household income, right? The business paid Sheena and I a little over $7.1 million already in six and a half years. Who's got, a, I need a volunteer with a calculator, please stand up. Cal okay, Amelia, put in your calculator $7.1 million. 7.1 million, you probably have to turn it sideways. <laughs> 7.1 million dollars, you got it? Okay, divided by $62,000 equals? <laughs> so eventually, if you want to become a millionaire, eventually if you want to make $7 million, if you're making, if you're making, uh, um, uh, if you're making, uh, what, uh, 62,000 a year, you add 144, was it 114? So 100, 114 years, making 62,000 a year, you'll eventually get to, shit. <laughs> all freaked out, man. You'll eventually make what? Seven million bucks. You guys, you guys got it? So this is, this is eventually math. So if you just work 62,000 a year, if you work just 114 years more, at 62,000 a year, you will eventually become somebody that makes $7 million. Sound like a plan? Or Amelia, even drop it even further. Drop it to the ridiculous. We just said a millionaire, right? $1 million. So $1 million divided by 62,000. Okay? How many years? 16 years. So do you guys want to, do you guys want to make millions of dollars here in the next, it took us three years to do it. Do you want to take the next three years to make a million dollars? Or do you want to take 16 to do it? Eventually? Now. So what's the payoff? Next slide, sweetheart. What's the payoff? Check, check this out. The payoff is you got to trust yourself. How many guys really trust you? Fellas, let me start with you. Fellas, how come you didn't ask the girl you wanted to ask to homecoming in high school? <laughs> how come you didn't ask the girl you wanted to ask to prom? Because you know why? Many of you in high school had no game. And because you had no game, you didn't trust yourself. And because you didn't trust yourself, you settled. Ladies, because you didn't trust yourself, you settled. You said yes to the wrong guy. <laughs> Same time too is, as you trust yourself, how many times have you heard the thing, can we trust your word? Can we cash your word? Why do we say that? Why do we say that? Because if you cash your word, if you follow through with what you say, guess what starts happening to your confidence? Up or down? Let's say you come through with your word. The small promises you keep to yourself, you come through with your word, guess what happens to your confidence? goes up. Guess what happens when your confidence goes up? Guess what you want more of? You want more skills. Why? Because you say, well, if I can do this with these skills, damn, I can do these. What more can I do with another skill? What's another skill set? What's another skill set? And guess what? You start doing more. You start achieving more. Your activity is increasing. Your productivity gets better. Guess what starts happening to you? A snowball effect of improvement. The second part, discipline. Oh, you hate that word, don't you? What's, what's the hard thing about discipline? Everybody wants to do the easy thing versus the hard thing. But I guarantee if you do the hard thing, using delayed gratification, it's worth it. So how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you get these 
aspects of trusting yourself and discipline better, consider number three. Start with something small. Start with a small promise. One of our MDs at MSM says, I'm gonna hit GB level three. She's never hit GB level one before. I said, stop being damn emotional. I mean, what, what can you really trust yourself with? And if you can trust yourself, guess who else can trust you? Your team, your family, other people. I was worried when she declared that. So potentially, what will happen to her? Confidence. It might erode. So start with something small, because it's easy to come through with. Next one. Once you start accomplishing the small things, start raising the bar a little bit. What do we, what, what's that in PHP language? It's called your no matter what. VPs, what was, uh, 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 give me an idea. Give me a number that you thought was impossible now that you're starting to hit on a regular. 10,000 a month. 10,000 a month? 10,000, would you say 10,000? You're like, man, I don't know if I'm ever gonna hit this. But now that you're hitting on a regular. Just 10,000 a month or 20,000? 20? Can I get a 30? <laughs> <laughs> Fred, what was the number that you thought you guys would never hit, but you started hitting on a regular? Uh, 25,000. 25,000? Yeah. Did you ever make that as a mixologist? Uh, Bartender? In, in six months. Six months, but not one month. Yeah. Think about that. For, the, for those of you here that have never made 10,000 a month or 25,000 a month, <clears throat> common Joe Bartender. Bartenderess. <laughs> Both of them. Server, well, food service industry. On a regular, making 25,000 a month, like predictable. When you're making 25,000 a month, guess what you're not worried about? Everyday shit. You're not worried about gas. You're not worried about driving three blocks down the street getting for, right? You're not, you can go to any restaurant making 25,000 a month and say, you know what? Yeah, I want this new steak. I want this uh, tomahawk steak. I want this new fish called filet mignon. Okay, I went all. It's new fish, fresh market, okay? Everything is new. You got it. You read the menu like this at 25,000, up, oh, nah, up, oh, nah, oh, what's that? Yeah, I'm gonna get that one. And your eyes stay there. You know what I mean? Like, they can give you a menu. How many times have you been to a restaurant, they gave you a menu, there's no price on it? You're like, um, could you give me one with the... <laughs> You gave me the wrong menu. Can you give me what the price is at? Oh, sir, we don't have any menus here at this restaurant. What, what do you realize about that restaurant? Chances are you're in the wrong restaurant. <laughs> Let me get the red lobster, okay? But in this situation, you begin raising the bar. Sheena says, babe, as a family, at that time of four, we started feeling food freedom at 25,000 a month. What do you need to become to start raising yourself to a level of income? You stop worrying about everyday shit. Why are you still, why are you still worried about who picks up the kids? Because you didn't hire staff, you didn't hire support staff at the house. Why are you still worried about doing laundry? Ladies, would you guys, gals, stop, look, would you like to stop doing laundry? Folding the clothes? <laughs> right, how many of y'all have a lot of kids? Right, would you like to have all these kids close, folded up, nice and neat, put in, right? Like, you don't, you don't even worry about what laundry detergent costs anymore. How many guys are raised in the laundromat? I was raised in the laundromat. I wanted to play, I wanted to play in the dryers. <laughs> okay, last but not least, how to unleash the power of delayed gratification? Mastery, what do you master? Consistency, consistency. How many of you guys uh, know that uh, comedian uh, Jerry Seinfeld? So, he was at a, uh, like a low level, like a, like a laugh factor or something like that, right? It was in a major venue. It's a local club. And the comedian, he just got off his set, he goes backstage, and who does he run into? The godfather of comedy, Jerry Seinfeld, right? He's like, whoa, what are you doing here? So I'm ready to go up. I said, you're ready to go up? Seinfeld is ready to go perform, do stand-up? It's not a special, it's not a series, it wasn't programmed. What are, you, what are you doing here at the local comedy shop doing stand-up? You know what Jerry Seinfeld said? I don't want to procrastinate, I won't get stuck in the period of procrastination, I need to keep the razor sharp. I'm sharpening my saw here by doing stand-up. Because if I stop doing this, I stop being funny. 
Seinfeld, somebody that you think would have perfected his craft. So what is he doing? He's invoking consistency into his business. Next slide. So just to take a look, something that PHP is able to do to me physically. A little bit of fast forward there, huh? Where's, where's Milton? I thought Milton was here. Changed a little bit of the diet. 20 years of scar tissue on my knees. Sitting next to Phil Heath. Phil Heath inspired me to make a change in my diet, my exercise. Next slide. Look at the uh, delayed gratification comes to Jordans. My first pair of Jordans was when Patrick gave me a pair. I was 42 years old before I had a pair of Jordans. Now, we were making 100,000 a year, we're making 250,000 a year. You think we could have, I, think I could have bought a pair of Jordans? But I got the delayed gratification thing down so cold that I even feel guilty spending another couple hundred bucks on Jordans. I make, I'm already making 300,000, 400,000 dollars a year at this time. Because I exercised that mental habit of delayed gratification. What's the other part of it? We, guys, for those of you that don't want to make a million dollars, that's, I get it, no problem. I'm not asking you to do this. But we delayed gratification for three years. What does that mean? We didn't take a day off for three years. The only time we took a day off was PHP events. But outside of that, oh, let me take that back. We took off Sunday mornings. Church and prayer and self, self time. But outside of that, we worked for three straight years. My question for you is, was it worth it? Because in three years we made a million dollars. Was it worth it? Some of you guys don't think it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what would you do if you know in three years you make a million dollars? What type of effort and work would you put in? Man. That's it. We decided not to take a day off for three years. Now, for some of you, I highly don't recommend it because you're not ready to pay that price. But we, we decided to become part of the now camp. We decided to hang out in, in Vegas. How would you like to call your rich friends? Hey, meet us in Vegas. Where are we staying at? Stay at the Bellagio. Cool. i see you there. It wasn't, well, who, who's going to pay? Are you going to pick me up? No. I'll see you in Vegas. Check in. At 8 o'clock, we'll have dinner. We'll go down to Sushi Samba. Right? We have some food. Order it up. In the morning, we make some contributions to the spa. We fly out that Saturday afternoon in time for a national call on Sunday night. Cool? Awesome. Sharpen the saw. Do you think that day was very special to us? First day off in three years? Sure. When we got married, we got married six weeks after coming on a PHP agency. Three days later after getting married, invoking delayed gratification, our first big event was our honeymoon. They had to kick me out of the office on our wedding day because our wedding day was Saturday because we couldn't afford Sunday. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, Matt, you're getting married this afternoon. I know, I'm finished up BOM. No, 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 get out. Do you, guys, do you guys kick me out the office? So wrapping up BOM. Got a quick shave, boom, to the chapel, get married. Next slide. How would you like to increase your identity of associations? You know who Sheena's uh, smoking a cigar next to? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Sheena that night learned how to smoke cigars. <laughs> Baby, can't get another? Why? I don't want to move. <laughs> Good. Here's another one. You done with that? Here's another one. I think Sheena smoked three cigars that night. <laughs> Invoking her Cuban side. How many guys read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad? That changed my life. How many guys would say that would change your life? Rich Dad, Poor Dad? I, I, I told Robert Kiyosaki, I said, your second book really changed my life, which is called The Cash Flow Quadrant which taught me how to make my money. And uh, he said, yeah, yeah, Matt. The second book was actually my best work. His second book, Cash Flow Quadrant. How many guys uh, know uh, the, the similarity between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant is the bottom, the bottom right picture? Who's in the bottom right picture? That's his trainer, Tim Grover. He trained, trained them both. So these, these are the associations. We're, we're having, uh, we're having uh, at the next board council retreat, we had a qualifiers event. We're having um, breakfast here at, uh, it, was, it wasn't uh, Gucci, it was Versace, right? Versace's uh, house. Okay, there's a C in there and an S somewhere, and you gotta pronounce them all, bro. <laughs> 
We were having breakfast at Versace's house? What? Who are we? I'm a kid that was raised in Chicago with no car. Grew up on a bus. If I was lucky, I had a bike. If I was luckier, I had a bike chain. <laughs> so if I had a bike chain, I knew if I parked it, 30 seconds later, my bike is gone. Next slide. Think what's happened to our family. This is the next board council retreat. Those are qualified, top left picture. Very proud of you guys. Flying a private jet. Our bridge kid in the middle, I'm holding in the middle picture. Finally, she and I had a kid together two and a half years ago named Jordan because he's born in the 23rd. Forget the bus pass and the bike. We picked up a Rolls Royce in front of our dream house. The company takes us all over across the world. We go to Greece. The coolest thing about that Greece trip, nine months later we came back with a souvenir. <laughs> Still living today. It's the best souvenir. But the coolest thing, honestly, how many of you had kids when you're absolutely just flat out broke? Okay, good. Okay, you're probably with me on this one, okay? You know there's a difference between having a kid when you're broke versus having a kid when you got money? Yeah. Holy, right? By the way, the first thing is take a, we were just messing around yesterday. So, so it's like uh, eight, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, we're ready to jump on a flight. It's 7.30 in the morning and we hear Jordan waking up. Jordan's waking up, ah, ah, right. kids jumping around all over the place, boom, thud, boom, boom. <laughs> He's up, cool, bring him, down to, bring him down to the bed. And we're just chilling with our son in the bed. Seven o'clock in the morning, just chilling, kicking out, smelling his little feet, tickling his little armpits. You know, the, that's the best mornings, isn't it? It's the best morning, smelling his hair, him slapping me in the face. <laughs> Dad, da! <laughs> Gosh, what Best thing, and you know what we're not worried about that morning? We gotta go, we're gonna be late! There's so much traffic! Ah! Ooh! Get him in the car seat. You know, the car seat, when you're in a rush, takes another 15 extra minutes. <laughs> but these are the things that you stop worrying about when you invoke delayed gratification. When you discipline yourself, or you practice consistency. By the way, it's the hardest thing, though. Why? Because we're programmed to buy things. What does credit teach us to do? Buy things. You can pay in equal installments over four years. That's what we're trained to do. But if you go opposite, guess what starts happening to you? You start running things, controlling things, instead of things controlling you. Next slide. Kids all have policies. Grandparents, look, look at the grandparents aren't even stressed out. Sheena retired her parents. I retired my parents. This is my mom, my beautiful mother, 1971, getting out of somebody's Bowered Buick because we decided to apply ourselves in business, pick up my parents in a, in a Rolls Royce. And I recorded a selfie video because my dad, my, sadly my dad's starting to lose his memory a little bit. And he's not necessarily coherent all the time, but he was locked in that day. And he was saying some things in the back. I was like, say that again, dad? What, say that again? I recorded him because he was murmuring under his lips. What was that, dad? What was that, dad? Say it again. He goes, this is a dream. What? This is a dream. I'm living a dream. Just because I picked him up in a Rolls Royce to his 50th wedding anniversary. I'm living a dream. Right? Jeez, praise the Lord. What's that, Pappy? We saw this only in a dream. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Matt. Thank <laughs> you.